All right, so uh, this section is 2.2 in your textbook. We're exploring more angles formed by parallel lines, and we're going to look at a couple relationships of angles. We're going to identify some angles. Actually, some of the things we talked about last section, we kind of at the very end, we talked about some of the things we're going to talk about again this section. So 2.2, I'm going to get you to bypass this first example. Um, I don't know if this a is as important nowadays. Uh, this is something that we used to do a lot of constructing angles using a, a compass from your geometry set and a straight edge. This circular line right here, this arc, is created when you put that uh, the pointy part of that, you know, that kind of metal triangle thing. You put the pointy part here and the part with the pencil, you kind of swing it around so it makes this arc. So anyway, so this is a way you can construct two parallel lines. And uh, we're, we're not going to, uh, I'm not going to work through this with you. But um, anyways, uh, you could construct two parallel lines without a protractor, uh, just with a compass and a straight edge like they have here. So if you're interested, you can look into that. What I do want to focus on, though, is getting to know these new types of angles that we're talking about. So we're going to look at the example one. And I do have example one clipped into the notes here for us to work on. All right, so recall from last section, we talked about... Um, we talked about angles that are on the same side of the transversal and angles that are on the opposite side of the transversal. We are going to call angles on the opposite side of the transversal, we're going to name them alternate angles. So alternate interior and alternate exterior. So the first example is going to, we're going to talk about alternate interior. So alternate interior, write that down. Uh, here's yesterday. Right at the very end, we kind of jotted this down, opposite side, exterior, okay, opposite side. We're not going to call it opposite side anymore. We're going to call it alternate, okay? So let's explore alternate interior angles. And of course, they're in red right here. This three and two, those are alternate because they're on the opposite sides of the transversal. And they're interior because they're inside the parallel lines. See that? Alternate interior. There's another set of alternate interior angles here in this diagram. Which ones are they? Just shout it out. Five and four, very good. Five and four. They're on opposite sides of this transversal, and they're both inside the parallel lines. That make sense? Okay, alternate interior. Okay, so what conclusions can we draw about alternate interior angles? Well, if you look at this, what would be your guess just looking at this diagram? Alternate interior angles would be what? Equal, supplementary, something else. Which one? No ideas? Equal. equal? Okay, so I think that would be a good guess to look into this measure at 3 and 2 and 4 and 5. Those would be, looks like they would be equal to each other. What we're going to do is we're going to work through a little two-column proof here real quickly to see if we can come up with a conclusion. So we're going to use already known properties of uh, parallel lines and transversals of these angles and we're going to try and see if we can come up with something here. So we know that angle 1 and angle 3 have a relationship. What do we know about angle 1 and angle 3? They are what? Equal, supplementary, something else. Which one? 1 and 3? Okay, some of you guys aren't remembering here. It's been a while, it's been a few days. Angle one is equal to angle three, okay, because they are opposite angles. Why? Because they're opposite angles. Do you remember that? If you have any two straight lines, any two straight lines, the angles that are opposite the intersection point are always equal. Those two are equal. These two are equal, okay? Opposite angles. All right. So we know that. What about angle 1 and angle 2? What's their relationship there? Angle 1 and angle 2. They are equal, right. And why are they equal? Very good. Corresponding angles. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So what can be said now about angle 3 and angle 2? Like their relationship to each other. Okay, angle 3 and angle 2 you said are equal. Why are they equal? What is the justification? 
because they both equal a third angle, right? If they both equal the same thing, that's <coughs> called the, remember we talked about that last chapter, the transitive property. Okay? So this would be your, your little two column proof um, working through that. So again, we know that angle three is equal to angle one because they are opposite angles. We know that angle one is equal to angle two because they're corresponding angles. And of course these lines are parallel. You could have written, you could have written here that uh, these lines aren't labeled, but if you said L and M are parallel and that's a given, that would be a good place to start as well, but we, we just skipped that. And then of course, because angle three is equal to angle one and angle two is equal to angle one, that means angle three must be equal to angle two because of the transitive property. Okay, is that making sense to anyone? Sort of, okay. Um, so alternate interior angles are equal when a transversal intersects a pair of parallel lines. That is something that you should jot down in your notebook. We have basically proved that to be true here. So when a transversal intersects a pair of parallel lines, the alternate interior angles are equal. <coughs> Another thing we could look at too is we talked this about this yesterday that same side interior angles, we said they were supplementary. Okay? So again, in a two column proof situation, you could do the same sort of thing by saying angle one equals angle three, angle three is supplementary with angle four, and because angle one equals angle two, angle two equals angle three, therefore angle two and angle four are supplementary. So again, you might have to listen to that one again, but that would be a way you could assemble a two column proof to prove that angle two and four are supplementary. These two are equal, these two are equal, three and four are supplementary, therefore two and four are supplementary because two and three are equal, okay? But let's skip on to uh, example three in your text here, okay? Okay, so let's move on here to example three. I guess before we do example three, um, uh, we talked about this yesterday, um, but let's just clip alternate exterior angles just so you know which ones those are. And if you need to jot that down in your book again, uh, you can. But alternate exterior angles would be the angles that were formed on opposite sides of the transversal <laughs> and because the exterior word is there, that means outside of the parallel lines. So alternate exterior angles would look like this right here. So my question to you is what, what relationship do alternate exterior hang angles have with each other given that the lines are parallel? What do they look like they are? Equal, supplementary, something else? Equal? Okay. I would... I would go along with that. Is there any way we could prove that? Yeah, there sure is. Um, maybe I'm going to blow this up here for you. Let's see if I can get this a little bit bigger. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, I can't. My mouse isn't working right now. So this angle right here, if you can see that, this one is equal to this one because they are opposite. Also called vertically opposite. You might read that somewhere. I might say that accidentally because that's the way I grew up learning. Vertically opposite, opposite angles. And because these two angles are equal because they're corresponding, now we can say that this angle and this angle are equal to each other uh, as well. So yes, alternate exterior angles are equal to each other. All right, example three, as promised. Here we go. If you're given a question like this, now that looks pretty busy right there, but if you're given a question like this, it says this, one side, of a cell phone tower built uh, will be built as shown. Use the angle measures to prove that the braces, that is these things right here, GC, BF, and AE, these ones that are kind of looking horizontal, prove that they're parallel. Okay, so we're not gonna necessarily need to do a two column proof here, but let me just walk you through it. If you somehow identify or explain in a two column proof or other ways, just in words, that you have um, angle HGC is equal to angle GFB, so that's this one and this one, they're, they're equal. 
right? And so because of the properties of corresponding angles, if they're equal, that means these two lines are parallel. So that would be your first, the first part of your argument. You ha we have GC and FB are parallel. We know those two are. Now if we look at over here, check this out. We have a 78 degrees here, and then we have all the way down here, another 78 degrees. So these are corresponding angles. So DCG and BAE are equal. They are corresponding. Therefore, CG must be parallel to AE. And then by the transitive property, finally, you can connect that BF and AE are parallel. Okay? So, does that make sense? Okay, you may not be able to just replicate that right, right at this instant, but that's what we're practicing in this section. Think about that transitive property, okay? If you can say that this thing is equal to that thing, and then this thing over here is also equal to the same thing, well then, the f these two are equal, right? That's transitive, okay? All right, any questions so far? Here would be an example of a two-column proof, okay? Um, and that would be using the alternate interior. We use corresponding, but you could also use the alternate interior. So let me just go over that real quick, actually. Look at 35 and 35. Those are alternate interior angles to CG, BF. So that means that CG and BF are parallel. Also, 22 degrees here and 22 degrees here, those are alternate interior angles, and they are equal, therefore BF is parallel to AE. By the transitive property, CG is parallel to AE as well, so they're all parallel to each other. Okay? Um, like I say, you might have to look at that again and kind of go over that again, but using that transitive property and the new properties uh, that we've learned are very important. Okay, so rounding out the lesson here, the key idea is when a transversal intersects two parallel lines, the corresponding angles we know are equal. And corresponding angles, can someone just quickly name me two corresponding angles here? B and F. B and F, correct. Anybody else? Are you going to say something else? C and G. C and G, very good. So if the two angles are parallel, corresponding or equal. Alternate interior angles. Can someone quickly name me two alternate interior angles? C and F, very good. And what else? D and E, those are alternate interior, very good. And those are what, equal, supplementary? Equal, very good. Can someone quickly shout out two alternate exterior angles? A and H, very good. Any other ones? B and G, oh, you guys are awesome. Okay, alternate exterior, and those are equal as well. Interior angles on the same side of the transversal, so that same side interior. Can someone shout out pairs that are same side interior? D and F, yeah, and C and E, very good. And they are, remember, supplementary. That means they always add to 180. If one is 80, the other one's 100, right? If one's 20, the other one's what? 160, okay. You guys are sharp. <laughs> All right. So um, that is, that's the, that's the lesson. Um, uh, I'll go over some... I'll go over this question with you to make sure you're on the same page, but your assignment is as follows. Okay, so your assignment uh, for today, 1, 2, 4, 10, 12, 15, and 20. And here are the questions. There's 1, 2...